video um, showing you how I make my homemade natural yogurt. Uh, I do this about once a week. Um, I make about four to six pints probably of yogurt a week. Um, it's so quick, so easy. Um, and you can have this going on a sort of cycle because you can use some of your yogurt from your last batch to restart your next batch. Because it's full of live bacteria and enzymes, all you need to do is add a little bit of that to your next batch and they multiply and they, they turn your milk into yogurt. So all you really need to be buying is milk. Um, I use skimmed milk. You might want to use whole milk or you might want to use semi. Um, it all works fine as long as you're not using anything like ultra heat treated um, it also won't work with any sort of nut milk so it's got to be milk um, I mean, basically all you need to do to get started is heat your milk you want to bring it to almost boiling just on a simmer you want to keep moving it you don't want to let the bottom scorch you want to avoid a skin on top although if that happens all you really need to do is pull it off so you want to get good and hot, not quite boiling, but what this does is it changes the protein structure in the milk and it means that your milk won't separate when it starts to turn to yogurt and it'll stay, it'll stay whole. So that's the first stage. Get your milk good and hot, almost boiling, then you want to turn it down, right down, and let it cool off. But I'm going to come back in a few minutes and show you that when I get to that stage. So I brought my milk up almost to the boil, um, left it there for a few minutes and then I brought it back down and I've let it cool right down to warm sort of room temperature. Now, I don't use a thermometer and um, I don't check temperatures, I really should, but I will leave the right temperatures for when you bring it up to heat and when you let it cool back down. I'll leave those down below so you can check and be more accurate than I am. Um, so you kind of want it warm bath temperature. This is a good temperature for the yogurt because it um, encourages the bacteria, the bacteria to reproduce and grow and turn your milk into yogurt. So your next stage is um, decanting your milk into the jars or receptacle that you're going to use to make your yogurt. Some people leave it in the pot, um, but what you need to, to keep in mind is, is the milk's going to have to be kept warm. So you want to put it in a receptacle that's going to be easy to keep warm. Um, some people keep it in the pot and then wrap the pot up in towels and stuff. Um, some people put it in jars and put them in a, a cooler with hot water. Um, in the summer sometimes I actually just leave it outside here in the inner conservatory it gets really warm. In the winter what I tend to do is I heat up water in my uh, slow cooker and then I turn it off. I put the jars in here and it stays really warm. This is really insulated so I put a towel over them and it stays really really warm in there and I check it every hour or two and if it's cooling down I'll pop it on and pop a timer just on for 10 minutes and it's just enough to, to bring the heat back up. Um, so you know there's a few options there but yeah what you, your aim is is to keep these jars warm because it keeps your bacteria happy and um, it keeps them reproducing and breathing and that's going to turn your your milk into yogurt. So what you need next is your starter yogurt. Now I just use, I just keep a, a cup full of yogurt from my last batch and keep reusing it. Uh, eventually you might find that it stops being as potent, it stops working as well. That can mean that outside bacteria has kind of got in there and your, 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 your bacteria in here is struggling to thrive. Um, then you can, you need to sort of restart and you can do that either by buying a commercial yogurt starter or just go to the supermarket and buy in natural yogurt. Um, just check that it's, that it's live yogurt, that it's got live bacteria in it. Most of them, most natural yogurts do. So I just add, I generally add about two tablespoons for each of these jars, maybe three. And that's, that's enough. Err on the side of putting too much in rather than not enough, if you're not sure. But a few tablespoons for each of these quarts. Does the job grand. I mean, choosing a yogurt to start with, if you're buying one from the supermarket, choose one that you quite like because you're going to find that the yogurt that you make is going to taste similar because it's the bacteria that's in that is going to be the bacteria that reproduces in here. And that's going to make your yogurt taste pretty much the same. So the next stage is um, pouring the, the milk in here, filling these up with milk or filling whatever receptacle you're using up with milk. Um, I'll come back and show you once that's done because it's really difficult to do with one hand. So, milk in my jars. Um, I'm going to give these a wee clean up before I put the lids on. Just a basic wipe. We'll get another clean ones to come out. But 
just so the bullet can go on. Pop your lid on. The reason I always prefer to use jars than, than to keep them um, in an open pot as well is that it keeps it keeps um, too much outside bacteria getting in. Um, like I said before, it can affect your um, your life natural bacteria that are in the yogurt. So I prefer to keep them sealed up as much as possible. So yeah, lid on, little shake just to make sure the yogurt's all mixed in properly. And then I pop them in here. Like I said, this is on, it's warm. It's a good warm temperature. Um, I won't, you need to watch these and get too hot quite quickly. So I don't tend to leave it on. When they're in there I let it come up to temperature I um, turn it off and I cover it with a, with a dishcloth and then I come back every now and then and just check that it's still warm that it's not that it tends to hold its heat really well as for length of time you want this to be in here it varies wildly depends on what sort of yogurt you like and um, the primary factors are the thickness and the, the sort of the sourness of it so the longer you leave this in here the more the bacteria will develop and the more of that really sour yogurt taste you'll have i quite like it quite sour and i quite like it quite thick so i tend to leave it in maybe seven eight hours it just depends the ambient temperature the temperature of whatever you're using to heat it up they just sometimes the bacteria itself can all make it vary so i do check on it at about five hours just open the lid stick a spoon in stir it see how the texture is and if you like a really thick yogurt but you don't want the really sour taste so you don't want to leave it in too long I take it out after maybe four or five hours and have a look at it taste it and if you want to thicken it up you can strain it through cheesecloth or muslin or just clean cotton and strain a lot of the whey out of it um, and that's a good way to thicken it up without leaving it to develop for as long and the whey can also be used for other recipes um, or it can be put in your garden, it's quite a good nutrient rich liquid. So yeah, I'm going to leave these um, for probably about 7 hours and then I'm going to check on them and I'll come back and show you how they're looking then. So it's been about 7 hours and um, our yogurt is looking pretty good. Have a quick look at it. So it's quite difficult to see thickened up but there is an amount of liquid whey almost and if you want just a normal yogurt you can whisk that in or the other option is to strain it out you can sort of see it you can almost see it there so yeah you can strain it out which will give you a thicker sort of Greek yogurt or you can mix it in that's, that's the option so if you want you know, a more sort of natural yogurt did you see it there? Well, that's just whey. So you can strain that out. You can um, use it in the garden. You can uh, use it in various other recipes if you want to keep it. Or you can just pop it in your compost. So to strain it out, I'm just going to show you how to do that. Just a clean cloth. Um, muslin will work just as well. Cheesecloth, anything like that. In a colander, in another bowl. And I'll just pop it in there. Just like that. You can see yogurt. Thick bits and then the wee that's the runnier stuff coming out there. So it'll thicken up obviously the longer you leave it in here the more liquid will come out of it. Um, I generally leave it two or three hours. Let some of the liquid come out into the bottom bowl and then I check it again. But again, just keep checking it uh, until it's the consistency you want it to be. So I'm gonna leave this for a few hours and then we'll come back and have another look at it. So I've just come through to check on my yogurt um, after about an hour and it's pretty much where I want it to be. It's nice and thick. So I'm gonna take it out here, I'm gonna jar it, and I'm gonna put it in the fridge. I'm gonna uh, put the whey out in the compost. Um, if you want it to get thicker, you can leave it longer. You could also leave it during the yogurt making stage for a bit longer and it'll be thicker. You could start with full fat milk, which would result in it being a lot thicker. But this is kind of what I'm going for. Um, we use it for breakfast, we use it uh, in both savoury and sweet meals. We use it as a cream replacer, so 
We use quite a lot of yogurt, and it's a good healthy way to get sort of probiotics that we would buy. So I just wanted to quickly show you the difference between the yogurt oh. um, when it strains and when it's not not strained. So this is the not strained yogurt. And as you can see, it's a much more sort of traditional natural yogurt texture. Um, and this is the yogurt after it's been strained. You see, this is a much thicker Greek yogurt texture. You can really see the difference there. Much thicker, much stiffer. So, you know, that's something to take into account when you decide if you're going to strain it or not strain it. At it I, I use both at different times. I tend to make more of the unstrained yogurt. But we use both for different things. So that's um, my quick and easy yogurt making method. I hope you enjoy it. If you try it, let me know below how you got on with it. Um, leave me any comments if you've got any tips for me, any things I could do better. If you do anything differently, um, let me know how you use it. Um, also hit the subscribe button. We've got a lot of preserving videos coming up. Uh, water bath cannon, pressure cannon a lot of uh, dehydrating videos coming up um, and we're coming back into our growing season quite soon so we'll be doing some gardening videos and um, possibly some videos on our chickens, quails, rabbits, we've got some baby rabbits too so you know a lot of homesteading videos coming up so hit the subscribe button and um, drop me a message if there's anything specifically you want to see us doing um, and enjoy the yogurt. Thanks for watching!